that. Yo guys, I'm Faster Rides and welcome along today. If you're new to the channel, then welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, then it's nice to have along for the ride. Look at this beast I've got for the next two days. BMW R1250 GS Adventure. Look at it. It's absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? Just a stunning piece of machinery. Triple black as well. Gold rims. <coughs> it's got all sorts of kit on it. It's got the fog lights at the front. Dynamic ESA suspension. Massive tank. Oop, 360. Nice. <laughs> I've mounted it there, but it's a bit of a gamble, and it? it is unfastened pretty tight, so I'll just have to be careful. But look at it, and it's stunning. It's got a heated rear seat. Keyless ignition. TFT dash. This raises up and down the screen. Yeah, so we're going to take it for a ride. <clears throat> we're just in the middle of Kettlewell in the North Yorkshire Dales. Stunning little town. And we're going to head out towards Hawes and up onto the tops. But yeah, isn't she beautiful? It's a big bike. Well, it's it's a big bike as in the front end is quite big and you know you get a lot of protection from that front end <clears throat> but the bike itself is actually quite thin it's it reminds me of the rt similar sort of shape same engine and all that anyway let's chunter in let's get out of here eh? this is actually the lowered version as well so it's the factory lowered version so you've got to turn it on by pressing that button and we'll see the dash come to life look at that oh we're in second gear that's not good now we're in neutral you can see it vibes when it starts up on that big uh, engine now i don't know how much this retails for this bike but i would imagine that it's pretty close to uh, twenty thousand pound with all this kit on or somewhere close i would imagine so it is the 1250 engine with the with the uh, shift cams in it. So we'll uh, we'll start with the comfort because I have ride, been riding this bike for about an hour and a half now on these country lanes, and yeah, it's comfortable. The seat is a little hard after about a couple of hours. You uh, <clears throat> you feel it nip the skin a little bit in your ass and it don't really cup it like my XR does that that really you know cups your bum <laughs> but the thing is there's a lot of room I'm not I'm not pushed up against the tank like I am on my XR I would imagine that with panniers and a back box it'd be comfortable for a for a, a pillion as well because uh, it's got the heated rear seat and I noticed as well that there is a USB slot as well for them down at the bottom or a DIN slot should I say or something like that that BMW tend to put on their bikes what about protection my legs are well protected by this big tank and this fairing uh, my upper body is in the bubble the screen is on the highest setting at the minute even at the lowest setting I didn't really feel much buffering on my helmet at all which was quite good but one thing I have noticed about this is because it's all open down here I mean look at all them gaps above the mud guard and everything it whistles quite a lot you know at higher speeds and I mean I'm not talking high speeds I'm just talking like 30 well 40 50 mile an hour like now I can hear a shh coming from the front end and it's like it sounds like the wheel bearings are buggered but they're not yeah, so that could get a bit annoying eventually. Also, very vibey on the hands. I mean, I uh, on my bike I have got the uh, puppy grips or whatever they call them, which are like sponge, and that really reduces the vibe. So maybe that's just me not being used to, uh, you know, having vibrations coming through the handlebars a lot. The screen, the screen's epic. Look how clear that is. 
even when I haven't got my polarizing glasses on it it looks really good and it's you know you can get into the functions quite easy I think you just press the menu button up or down oh that's it you press the munch function button down and then you can go into navigation if you've got it and all that sort of stuff dynamic auto that's the suspension that wow okay so i don't know how we get out of this oh that's all the bike set up bloody hell uh, so what should we move on to the brakes the brakes are very good it has the hill climb assist on it so what you do is when you come to a, a standstill it's like a like a parking brake you just squeeze on the front brake there squeeze on it hard and then it puts the handbrake on we'll call it that for now and then to let it off you just squeeze it again <laughs> and I'll be honest when I first had a go with it damn I nearly lost the bike because I were revving it up a bit to you know and then release the clutch and it would boof it surged forward so the brakes are brilliant the front brake is oh honestly you just need to two finger it and you're really you know you don't need any more than that but that's like all bmw bikes are really good brakes from what i've seen anyway my, my xr is brilliant on the front brakes but i'll tell you what i have noticed as well comparing to my xr again because that's the only experience with bmw bikes i've had is when you put the the anchors on on this it doesn't dip down it just keeps on uh, it just keeps forward in fact let's just try it yeah it is very it keeps it upright really well whereas my XR it does really dip down quite a bit the back brake is lovely well you would expect it to be because you know it's a brand new bike let's move on to suspension then the suspension is oh honestly absolutely brilliant I find it, it's really hard to explain how how it is it's like it's really soft but then it's not soft in the sense that it'll you know it bottoms out or anything like that it just the dynamic mode is absolutely brilliant you know for the suspension and it's so it holds the corners and everything I haven't noticed anything where it uh, you know it fails or anything it really doesn't it's absolutely awesome suspension wise and I mean it has got like knobbly tires on this as well and I'll be honest they've been brilliant too I haven't felt it move on the road once I mean don't get me wrong I'm not pushing the bike or anything but you know this is the sort of these are the sort of speeds I would be riding on a bike like this anyway and that brings me to another point as well this bike with this engine in it it's not it, it's not egging you on to drive to ride fast it's like it's saying let's slow down a bit put me in a high gear and i'll just trundle along all day <laughs> that's what it's saying whereas my xr is saying drop me a gear and open the throttle because i want to go <laughs> but this isn't like that at all it is it, it's it's very uh, subdued in that way I mean look I'm in third gear now and just over 2,000 miles and it just pulls the torque on this engine is brilliant but anyway we're, we're digressing off the suspension there really so this is the lowered frame version as well now I'll tell you why I got the lowered frame version because everybody was saying oh GS is the really tall bikes really tall bikes well they're not they're not at all in fact this is too small for me in in it feels a lot lower than the XR you know I can put my feet down quite comfortably on both sides and I'm only five foot nine with a 30 inch inside leg and uh, yeah I, can, I can't flat foot it but you know I can comfortably put my feet down look at this view yeah the suspension is absolutely epic on this bike it's really beautiful it feels plush but it doesn't feel 
like it would bottom out <laughs> you know and maybe that's the dynamic esa or whatever but honestly guys this the suspension is bloody awesome on this uh, the engine let's talk about the engine now well we've already touched on that saying that the engine is really nice it doesn't it doesn't want to uh little crawler cows here guy taking pictures look the engine doesn't want you it doesn't make you think oh come on it wants to wants to really get a move on don't get me wrong it can if you if you give it some it'll it'll will motor end of day it's a 1250 engine it's got some blooming grunt let's get past this lad and the torque that comes out of this engine is unbelievable it's just got bags and bags of torque it will pull you in any gear at any speed <laughs> it's really crazy you know whereas on my xr i don't have to work the gears because that's a brilliant engine again and it has plenty of torque but on this you can really tell a difference how, how much torque there is and it is a beautiful bike to ride it really is a beautiful bike slow it down a bit for these corners like I said it's got loads of torque loads of pull so the engine yeah it just pulls like a blooming train I mean I haven't even opened it up yet and I don't think I will because there's no need to it it just wants to you know what I mean it it's not a racing bike it's for doing loads and loads of miles with loads of luggage on maybe a pillion and the engine is really nice and, and maneuvering it around as well I, uh, I parked it outside the Starbucks in uh, Skipton just down the side and I had to manhandle it back onto the road and uh, on a, what are you doing idiot uh, yeah it was really easy to manhandle around I, I, I was expecting it to be a lot heavier in fact I'd say my XR is a lot more awkward to move around than this thing and I think it's because all the weights at the bottom end you know with the the boxer engine being low center of gravity in the bike or should I say the boxer engine makes the bike have a low center of gravity but yeah this is the sort of bike that that you would want to go touring on because it doesn't egg you on and now you can take time to look around and everything now I'm not saying that you can't do that on my XR you can certainly do that but you have to force yourself to do it you know whereas this bike does it naturally on the XR that just wants you to ride fast and take corners fast and lean it down and all that sort of stuff because I suppose it is it is a sports tourer whereas this is just a tourer or adventure tourer would you say yeah so we'll move on to the gearbox now the gearbox well this one has the uh, the shifter the quick shifter and the blipper and I'll be honest it is just like my XR to get it to go up the box smoothly you have to like let off on the accelerator just a touch and then put it in gear then back on and then it's really smooth but if you do it when it's like just keeping the throttle where it is then it can be a bit clunky I mean don't get me wrong going out of first into second you know that's not really a, the ideal place to use a quick shifter anyway and it does give false neutrals and things like that jumps into neutral instead of second gear but yeah the, the, it's just a real pleasant bike to ride the gearbox it is lovely apart from the clunkiness on the on the shifter so on the blipper the blipper's beautiful now this engine with it being so torquey you you know if you ride it if you get used to it and ride it correctly you know there'll be there'll be less times that you need the brake because you can use the gears and the engine 
you know, it's only traffic lights and junctions and things where you'd have to use the the brakes because you know the the gearbox in this is brilliant. And the flipper just to put it down, let off the accelerator, press the button, there you go, fourth. You know, and there's just a little that was you know really really smooth. The dash, we've obviously touched on the dash, the dash is beautiful, you can see it, and all the settings that you can go into and mess around with on your bike. So you can set it up however you want, you know, to your to your preferences. One thing I have noticed about this bike, when you lean it over and flick it over, it does take longer to get it over from one side to the other, comparing it to my XR, but again, it's a different type of bike in it, so it feels more docile, that's what it, it feels like. It feels like the granddad of bikes, whereas my bike feels like it's the slightly matured male, I would say. 30 35 year old <laughs> because it's still got that oh, I want to rip, rip, rip my face off and go mega fast and all that sort of stuff but then it's got the the touring side which is great you just throw the bags on and box and throw your tent on and all your gear and get on out whereas this this has like a you know your granddad middle-aged He's got enough experience in life to realise that ragging it along a road <laughs> isn't a good uh, a good way. You know, take your time, savour the ride. <laughs> and that's what this bike's all about. Let's get it in first gear. Shoulder check. Wow, you don't even need to give it any throttle. It just just pulls it. <laughs> That's lovely. Would I have one of these? Would I chop my... This is another bad design by uh, BMW. And I don't know if I can show you. But you see how the lights are on there? When you put the indicator on and press the brake, which I don't think I can show you without somebody else being here. The indicator is part of the light that is shining the red. So the people behind in the car, it's harder to see that you're indicating. Right guys, I think that's all we've got time for today. So thank you very much for watching. Please hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed and don't forget to press the notification bell. So you get informed of any new releases usually every wednesday at 8 pm and every sunday at 8 pm hit that like button if hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and i'll see you next time peace out